it is a chilly crisp spring morning here. It is a whopping 33 degrees, but it's gonna be a beautiful day. The sun's out, it's totally blue sky. It's gonna be absolutely gorgeous day to work outside. If you are new here, hello and welcome to Mama From Scratch. This is a place of inspiration and motivation, and today we are gonna be working on cleaning and decorating the front porch for springtime. It is very blah and boring. I have a couple dead plants um, from the winter time that just didn't make it. Most of them are annuals anyways, but even some of the perennials were like, mm, we didn't make it. So, oh well, time to freshen up the space, right? I got a couple of new pieces to add to the space. We're gonna change up the layout a little bit. So I'm really excited. I hope this will give you a couple ideas and ways you can decorate your front porch, back porch, or just the outdoors in general for springtime. And I'm really excited. So let's just go ahead and get started. If you enjoy these type of videos, be sure to give them a big thumbs up, share them with your friends, and hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upload from me again. So with that, let's go ahead and get started cleaning and decorating the front porch. little perennial daisy didn't make it. <laughs> oh well. So I get to use a new tool and I'm kind of excited. We got a battery powered um, air blower. <laughs> it came free with the chainsaw, so I don't know if that's really free, but you know, hey, I don't know how, it just says bunny and turtle speed. So let's see how this baby works. <gasps> Watch the sun go down over the same old town Like so many times before we Look at the same old stars Battle the same old wars Like so many times before And I know that we're not perfect Okay, I'm a total fan of not having to use a cord. <laughs> this is great. This thing works really good too. No wonder he wanted it. I looked at a couple different places for some outdoor rugs and I wanted one that wasn't giant like a five by seven for the space and I found this three by five on Amazon and I love the design of it. It is so pretty and I think it will hide the dirt really, really well and it was really affordable. I did find this one at Target. I found these really pretty planters at Lowe's and I love that they look like stone but I think they're like a resin or something. They're so, so nice. Um, and they look real, so. These are faux cedar trees and they have held up so well. I've had them for well over a year now and I highly recommend them. And they come in a couple different sizes. 
I found these beautiful hydrangeas at Costco for like 20 bucks. And I think they're gorgeous. So. I kind of want to think, keep things really light and airy for springtime. these planners at Costco last year but they still have them this year and they come in a pack of three I think for like ten dollars really inexpensive I planted my tulips in here like about five weeks ago I think and they're coming up and I can't wait to see them they should be um, purple and pink on the outside so I'm really really excited for that but I want to actually set that one here but I need to get a tray for underneath it so when I water it, it doesn't go all over my rug chair pretty? I found this at Lowe's as well. It's coming through. So I found these really pretty fluted planters at Walmart. They were really inexpensive. I think the smaller size was $11 and the larger one is 18. I really liked them, but they definitely need to sand them down. Just easy 220 grit. And I decided to cover them in this um, hammered spray paint. I really like the coverage that this gives. I did one really good solid coat and that's all I needed. And I like that it kind of shimmers and it's not completely black. So don't be afraid if there's a planter that you like but you're not loving the color, give it a little makeover with some spray paint or regular paint and make it look the way you want it to. I got this watering can from Walmart, super cute. So instead of doing a traditional spring sign, I wanted to use one of the ones I got in the past. My mom got this for me years ago and it's been in all of our houses, but I wanted to add this. I thought it'd be really cool. It's all wood. It's actually made out of the old grape trays. Um, and she uh, laser cuts all of this. I'll leave her uh, link down below in the description box for you just tap the little arrow here and you can look it up under the wood sign link. I think that's cute. And in my last spring DIY video, the one video before this, I made this really pretty hydrangea wreath. And something you can do to not scratch your door or interior door, exterior door, is you put glue fabric on the outer part 
of the um, wreath since this is a grapevine wreath you can kind of scratchy and this will just help prevent that from scratching the surface that you put it on. So I think I'm done decorating the front porch for springtime. I think it turned out really beautiful. It has that little nod to Easter still, which I absolutely love, but I can easily change that out later on after it passes. And come summertime, I want to add lots of color to this space and some herbs and things like that once the nurseries get all that stuff in. The tulips, when those bloom, will provide purples and pinks to the porch, which I'm really excited. So that's why I didn't add any color with the hydrangeas because the tulips are going to be a burst of color when those decide to bloom and I'm so excited. So let me show you how it turned out. So I wanted to switch it up and see what it would look like without the chair there. So I moved a couple things around and I really, really like it. I think it looks much better not having the Target floor mat on the bottom there. And I love the way the hydrangeas look with the faux cedar plants here and the planters. Oh, so beautiful. So let me know which setup you like the best. Um, I will have everything linked in the description box below. Just tap the little arrow on the right hand side and it will take you to all the items that you've seen in today's video. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Again, if you have, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And what color scheme are you doing for spring this year on your porch? Let me know that in the comments as well. Now, many of you have asked for a garden update, and so I'm going to share some gardening things that I have been working on. So right now, I'm going to be planting the tulips and anemones. I can't say that at all, but I'm going to be planting them along the border of the walkway as you enter into the garden on both sides. I'm super excited about this. I know this is something I should have done in the fall, but I didn't make it to it. And the ground is finally not frozen so I can work in it again. And so I had to wait for everything to melt off and everything. So that's why you guys haven't really had a garden update lately, but I am slowly working my way around in here, adding a few things, but the tulips have sprouted and everything. So I have high hopes. I'm really hoping that they will bloom. If not, hopefully they'll bloom next year. We can only hope, right? ended up taking the tulips and everything all the way down and I actually planted a couple daffodils in here as well and then I added some sand to this just to kind of make the soil a little bit lighter um, and break it up because I haven't really amended the soil much at all and I did end up putting a little bit of fertilizer on there just to help them out a little bit but I do um, have plans to add compost and starter fertilizer to my garden beds that I'll show you here in a minute that I've been working on. Now here is a full overview of how the garden is looking. I know, pretty blah and boring, right? But the snow melted, the ground's unfrozen, so I can finally work in here. Um, but this is the berry side, and then this side is the vegetable and flower side. So I ended up changing my mind how I want everything to flow in here. So I actually had to rework the pathways and move them. So this one path here is actually moved over to the left here. That's why I'm making room for. 
It was a lot of work, but it was manageable. So I'm really happy, again, like the progress that I said I've made in here. It's just taken a little bit of trial and error. And once I got the pathway moved, I shared some of it on Instagram. So if you're not following me there, you can. But I'm using these brackets. I found these at Lowe's. Um, and I'm using 2 by 12 and 2 by 10 cedar boards for my raised bed. Super thick. So they're going to last a long time. And the boards were nice and dry. And I'm just really, really happy with this. So I ended up making my beds uh, three feet by 18 feet. So each of the boards I had to cut down to nine foot lengths. And then I'm using this uh, end piece as a guide to making sure everything is as square as possible. And I'm gonna be moving the side beds here on the left. And I'm really happy with how easy they were to move because the beds themselves just came right out. You'll see that here in a minute. But I got these stakes from Lowe's and I'm using these on the edge, about three per side, just to help with the bowing um, of the boards with soil inside. Sometimes they want to bow and so this is just to help that out a little bit. This air. I was really happy when I could just lift off the garden um, beds and then the soil was already compacted in there. But I ended up doing raised beds for two reasons. One, we have gophers. So I'm using this hardware cloth to add at the bottom and it's a little bit of a hassle. And yes, it adds a little bit extra, but it's worth it to say they do not eat my vegetables. And then two, I'm doing the raised beds because of warmth. We are really cold here and I need the extra warmth for the soil. So do whatever is best for the region that you are in. I am going to be doing some hoop houses over these as well. Um, I am adding cardboard to the top of the um, hardware cloth just to help prevent weeds from coming up. It's worked really well in the past year when I did it and I'm really pleased with it. So now I'm adding my soil and I'm reusing obviously some soil and I have soil on the side that I bought last year and then I'm going to be adding compost to the beds as well and then of course starter fertilizer once I start planting to get everything well established. Now I'm adding this weed fabric. This stuff works incredibly well. You can buy it off of Amazon. Um, I'll leave it linked down below for you, uh, but you don't have to add anything on top of it if you don't want to. It keeps the weeds out. I have it on one row in the berry side and it blocked out and killed all the weeds underneath it. So I was really happy with that. It's super thick. It's what a lot of the professional gardeners use and I know why because it is legit. Um, it's a little bit of investment, but you won't have to replace it in a few years at all. It's really, really nice. And mine, the exposed stuff had snow on it all winter, a good two feet, and it doesn't show any signs of wear at all. So the one thing you have to do is after you cut it is you want to burn the edge so it doesn't unravel on you. Now I'm kind of having to do double the amount of work because I'm re positioning my garden the way I want it laid out. If I wasn't doing this, it'd be a little less work, but I'm okay with it because it's a little bit trial and error sometimes with gardening, um, with anything really, you kind of figure out what the way things flow better for you and what you envision. And so yes, I'm having to move dirt here and there and back and forth, but it's in the end, I am really happy with the new design and the layout. I think it's gonna be way more functional for me and I'm really excited. So I'm actually thinking in the beginning part of the garden beds, adding flowers there and then the rest will be vegetables. Now these two beds had annuals in them and my cut flowers last year and so what I'm going to do is I'm taking all the boards from the one bed and adding them and stacking them to the other one to make another taller raised bed that I can use for strawberries. I'm going to be moving the strawberries over to this side just because the trellises and things like that I think it'll work out better. Now this bed, um, they're thinner boards. Those are just regular cedar fence pickets from Lowe's. So you can use those, but this is how it's looking. We're gonna be adding two more raised beds on this side here. So I've got to kind of shape this area out and then I gotta move the soil. It's already been compacted from last year's beds, but 
overall, it's going really well. It's just a little bit of time consuming, but I could not be happier with it. So hopefully you're enjoying seeing the garden progress. Soon we will have flowers and vegetables grown in here. I have started some of the seedlings already, um, but they're not much to look at. So you'll see those soon. So I ended up moving part of the strawberries into this lower bed here and I ended up to found eight June bearing uh, strawberries. I got like 26 plants from all the new runners that they put out this last year. So these are looking really good. They overwintered fantastic and all I did was put some straw on them. So I'm really pleased with that. But that is a little garden update for you. I really hope you enjoyed today's spring clean and decorate of the front porch and the garden. Let me know what your favorite part about it is. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, check the description box for all the links and previous videos. And with that, I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you so much for being here and spending part of it with me. God bless. You're a star burning